Hey all, Stu from Touch Loops here, back with another tutorial video. Um, this time it's for uh, one of my favourite, favourite artists, John Hopkins. Okay, so this is, like I said, a session I've written, um, a kind of ethereal techno track. I've got all of my layers here, so let's give it a quick listen and then we'll start to break it down. <laughs> start with the drums um firstly the kick this is a pretty standard techno kick um top of the rockets from our paradise knights pack and uh, let's hear that on its own so it looks like i've just knocked out a bit of 1k there and then i'm using the drum bus to really bring out the transient so if you turn this all the way to the left you'll get more of that clicky clicky sound and then all the way to the right it's going to pull out more of the the decay so we just want that nice and tight um, and I think drum bus overall gives things a bit of a crunch um, which is really really uh, useful especially when you have the amount of layers this track has so then on top of that dry kick drum I have these kick textures that are quite low in the mix but let me bring those out So what they're doing is a technique that I think I first heard in open eye signal. This kind of constant rhythm that isn't coming from the main kick drum or the bass. Um, and when you play them together. We've already set up our groove um, with no music information and they're quite quiet in the mix to make space for the other low end sounds, but I think it just adds so much. And they're just two kick drums loaded into a sampler, nothing on it. And I have one about 14 dB quieter than the other. And that's how you get that kind of, uh, if it was a real drummer, kind of a, a harder kick and a softer kick. So um, yeah, really good bed to start because it's all about rhythm. So I think John Hopkins is all about rhythm and subtlety of rhythm within his drum layers and percussion lines. Um, so on this kit group, we'll start bringing in some of these plugins. I'll get it playing and then I'll, I'll go through each of these. So yeah, rolled off some of that bright sound so it doesn't clash with the percussion later and then maybe given it a bit of a boost here. Um, rolled off the gain slightly and then Pro Q3. So I'm using, I'm using Pro-Q3 because it has a dynamic EQ. Um, again, you don't have to do this. It's, it's basically just attuning these top frequencies, but without um, changing the overall EQ sound. So only when the kick plays does it dip. Kind of like a sidechain. Uh, but it's only doing minus three here, so I think this is me just being picky. Um, and then Decapitator similar to drum bus in that I'm just saturating the sound so without it yeah it, it it's a five percent difference maybe but um, overall I find that that really helps um, characterize the sound right from the start so that's the kick drum let's move on to the percussion so I've broken it down into dry and wet percussion here, which helps with the mix later. Um, as I said, I feel like a lot of uh, that John Hopkins drum sound comes from layering of sound. Um, so let's go through each sound first before we look at what we've done to them. 
just a pretty standard shaker. Kind of a garagey, roomy loop. And then a very dry percussion group. Uh, let's see what's going on within there. So just a straight hi-hat, very, very thick sounding. Some uh, equally as chunky, kicky percussion. A cabasa that will break down. Some foley, which are these sounds. Very nice. And then two sets of snares. So the capacity, the cabasa and the left and right snares have a similar effect on them, this kind of granular sound if I play them together. And I've done that using Portal, which is an output plugin, but you could, there is another way of doing it in Ableton, which we'll look at at the end. But for now, I've used Portal, which looks like this, and it has these various sort of granular effects. Um, this already has it on it, but I'll put it on again to make it more clear. So without it. And with. It kind of gives it more of a texture. As I go through these presets. It's an amazing tool for adding texture and variation to anything. Uh, so this is just a straight offbeat cabasa, but with uh, with that plug-in on, it really wakes it up, um, which is really useful. And then these left and right snares are similar. I don't think I use portal for them though. Um, they are just using uh, Analog Lab by Arturia. I think I loaded up just a snare sound. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, so these are just snare sounds using their, um, I think this is collection five. Um, so again, I've used that to get this sound. Any sound, any sort of tight, small snare sound will do. Um, and really, it's just about making it as small as possible. Um, Let's look at what I've done with the MIDI here as well. So this looks like it's been played in live. It's very off the grid here. You can see nothing is really lined up, which definitely makes me think I've played it. Um, and really the idea that the jagged kind of broken rhythm that he uses, I really think can only be achieved by playing in MIDI clips live, um, kind of swinging onto and off of the downbeat. So let's play the cabasa, the left and right snares, and the kicks together. See how that sounds. Yeah, you can hear how these snares are, uh, are falling onto the kick. Um, this is a good time also to look at what's going on with the whole percussion group. Um, so I have a group within a group here. I think that's probably just because there was something I wanted with these sounds specifically that I didn't want to be applied to the rest. So within this first percussion group, oh, we have portal here. Perfect. So I can turn that off. And then turn it on. Hear how it's slightly breaking apart the sound. This is a particle reduction preset. Pretty great, really good plugin. And then following that, we have LFO Tool. Um, I'm using LFO Tool purely to be precise, but LFO Tool is essentially a it's it's a side chain tool, but it generates its it uses a, an envelope here rather than an input signal. So at the top of all my sessions, I have a side chain signal, which is just a short sound, which then I can use instead of using the kick drum as my signal for side chain, and that's just to do with things like controlling the decay of the of the input signal so I can get a faster and cleaner sidechain 
sound essentially um, and and this just does that but you can load it onto anything and uh, it does the job so uh, let's turn it off and on and see yeah it's also it has this smooth function here which is really useful as well for just getting rid of pops and clicks which can be a bit of a problem with side chaining um, more decapitator here and then uh, soothe 2 which really is a great plugin. It, it, again, you, you can do it yourself by ear, but it just removes a lot of, um, well, I can show you exactly what it's removing. Yeah, that kind of unpleasant, those unpleasant frequencies that you can get if you build up enough um, percussion layers, especially as a lot of these percussion layers are um, found sound and foley that have a lot of artifacts in them um it just suck it just pulls those out you you can do that by ear you know to taste but i find that um soothe 2 just does it really really quickly and it's really uh, useful for that especially again with the amount we're stacking up here and then on my overall percussion group i think it's just more of the same in fact it's almost exactly the same so more soothe more decapitator just continually adding small layers of texture and distortion to glue all the sounds together and get that kind of thick aggressive um percussion sound that john hopkins has and then we've got a pro key three at the end here yeah so that's the other thing um brightness this mix isn't very bright sounding to my ears and i don't think a lot of john hopkins stuff is very bright sounding either there's nothing overly um bright across the mix it's all very mid heavy and a lot of the tops are going to be rolled off uh, to kind of give it that thick mid-range heavy sound um, and as we go through maybe that will become clearer um, so yeah not overly bright at all so then we have our wet percussion so our wet percussion sounds like this so we have a rhythm first side chained again it looks like i froze this at some point so um i'm not sure exactly where that came from i think it's probably just a loop that uh, had the texture i like uh symbol 808 this this is i think an ableton 808 symbol sound again uh lfo tool if i turn it off and then on which you could do uh, using the side chain signal. So just loading up a compressor with a side chain on. Uh, I might just show you how to do that now. Um, oh God, new Ableton. Where is, yeah, compressor, there we go. So compressor, actually, why don't I just go through this now? So on the left-hand side of the compressor here, I've not looked at this Ableton 11 compressor. It looks exactly the same though. Um, you turn on side chain and select your input. So firstly, I'll select it from the kick. If I turn LFO tool off, Audio from kick, let's get it from this top of the rock kick, our driest kick. Uh, have the ratio up, attack. And then pull the threshold down, which is here. So that's pretty good. Um, nice short release. The only reason I would choose sidechain signal over that kick is, and we'll see it here. because it's such a shorter sound coming in, you have way more control over the release time, specifically in the attack time. So you could do that and that sounds great. Um, or you can just load up LFO tool. So yeah, this is where you have control again over the attack and overall shape of the side chain. And I just, have gotten used to using this rather than setting up this chain every time and then smooth just smooths that out but it wasn't needed here so yeah two options there um i've picked one over the other reverser which is by um killer hearts it just reverses the sound at the same time uh, you know as it's playing on the same channel but you could do this by duplicating this channel and reversing the sound It's, um, there we go. 
just smoothing out the signal, really, making it a bit more textural. Um, it's pretty useful. And then room loop. Yeah, just something to give the percussion some depth. Um, again, rolling off the very highs, uh, rolling off all of the noise that was down at the bottom. Let's see. Yep, so just kind of giving it that uh, uh, band EQ sound. No auto pan, no utility, no compression. Another LFO tool, and again, Soothe, just taking quite a lot out. Which is great. Um, so I think what I'm trying to express here is how layer after layer after layer and all these subtle additions of saturation sidechain compression um keeping everything eq'd so nothing is clashing and we're not having an over overly built up very very high end or low end um and then when you play them together they kind of lock into place oh whoops sorry And that LFO tool, I mean, it's everywhere. It's all over this percussion. Um, you, but again, you could do that with a sidechain compressor. It's so, I mean, it's giving everything that rhythm. It's gluing everything together underneath the kick. Without it, the whole thing would just fall apart. Um, so they're the drums.